what's going on? As you can see by the title, I'm taking a more serious tone. Been looking at a lot of stuff and been looking at the craziness with politics and other things, but there's some that I've been thinking about and I see it happening very, very soon, next three to four years getting ready for the next recession, which depending upon where you are, what you want to do, let's see, it's kind of too white, hold on a second, for those who are wondering, this is my other office, the people are in the, the main office, this is where I'm going to do a lot of Mac Daddy Media stuff, I'm going to just play around with the light because it looked a little harsh, oh that's much better. And let's see, what's up, Melissa? I can't wait, that's funny. Um, let's see if you can see that, yeah. I did that this weekend. That's gonna be another whiteboard wall, but I'm gonna have it framed a little differently. But it's coming. And you know, there are many people who are going through how good the stock market is and all this other stuff, right? If you remember Alan Greenspan, <laughs> What's up, CJ? Getting ready. Uh, Alan Greenspan. We've been through this before. And it's, it's going to happen again. But it is also a great time to build a business. Let me bring this a little closer. It is really... <laughs> What's up, Levi? What's up, Sonic? It is the best time. Like, this thing... What's going on, Horror Breakdown? I started this channel 2009, which was toward, I guess, the middle of the Great Recession, which started 2006, picked up speed in 2008, and if months later I was doing this, and I've grown this business year after year. Now, what's up, Izzy? What's up, Coco Cover Muscles? If you want to start a business, what's up, AKW Beats? The time is now, and this is why. I'm going to talk about some other stuff more detail at B School for Hustlers. You know, you just go to the front of the channel and you can check out all the other stuff. But I had a situation with banks. There used to be so many things you can do with banking. And due to the Patriot Act, and I'm not saying this to kind of brag, but I was going to go buy this car. And I took money out the bank. Do you know that that form they tell you about that if you put more than ten thousand dollars in the bank you have to sign this form well they fill out the form you don't have to do anything well it also works if you pull more than ten thousand dollars cash out and they'll tell you that what's up henry what's up boulder chris and i was just like kind of blown away i didn't buy the car because it wasn't what it was supposed to be but i was going to do that but the whole thing is i've talked to uh, three different bankers recently and with I know what's coming, you're going to have to start developing a very strong relationship with your banks, not your bank, your banks. You want to have two to three different banks that you have relationships with to the point where you walk in, they know who you are, that they don't have to check your ID for you cashing checks or, you know, in the case of Chase, if you make cash payments, they want to see your ID unless, quote, the teller is comfortable enough and knows you and you've developed a certain pattern of behavior and it, it's just crazy because I did take time out to watch Comney testify it was very disturbing but I also know that while Comney was testifying the house was passing this crazy banking deregulation bill if you're on my one of my friends on my Facebook page you will see the post that I put it happened at the same time they slid that through and provisions and stuff in this bill, what's up Carlton, will make the last recession look like a picnic. They've pulled all of the regulatory things to prevent those kind of things. They pull all of them out. It is wide open, wide open. And I look at that, what's up Diana, and it's changing my behavior because you could start a company in a recession. Actually, as someone said earlier, everything's on sale. Um, you can get, if you can get loans, and this this is why I'm saying preparing. Like, you know, if your credit's jacked, you, you need to clean it up like ASAP. 
if you have no money saved, you need to change that ASAP. And you need to start working on so many things. What's up, Sonic? I'm cashing out on your material. Appreciate it. You've got to get the posture of a wealthy mindset, meaning that you can make moves when everybody can. What's up, Chauncey man, 2K5, what's up? And that's the thing, because I'm just looking at, uh, <laughs> what's up, Desiree? I'm just looking at all the stuff that is happening right now, because right now, let's be really, really clear, and this is, I'm not gonna get quote in political commentary, I got another channel for that, but many of the things are coming out of distractions. And while you're over here looking at all this, this is going on over here. And what's going on over here is going to directly impact you. What's up, Nate? Uh, how do you feel about crypto investments? Stud 78. Uh, the Hectorish repealing the Dodd-Frank Act, re repealing the Vector Rule. And I feel that cryptocurrency is unstoppable, but I think we have a long way to go with that. I think if you're doing Bitcoin and other stuff, keep doing it. Learn as much as you can. Be in there. What I'm going to do is change up some stuff. 800 to 40K in crypto investments in the last six months. I've been hearing a lot of stuff that's been going on with Bitcoin. Now, to go with that, you could take a business. Um, I answer a lot of questions on Quorum. And people talk about investing if you can get in on the next Facebook, yeah, you can make millions very quickly. If you can get on the next Uber. But if you ever notice that when you look at the investors on these things, it's the same people over and over again. Those are what's called accredited investors. You as the average man, even if you had like 10 million, you couldn't get in because you're not part of the club. So we're going to be talking about a lot more business building. I have all what you need, what has convinced you otherwise. <laughs> It's some um, signs. Oh, on the crypto stuff, I will look at it, but I'm going to do what I'm good at, which is building businesses. You're going to see a lot of changes, like you know, this whole thing right here. Um, there's a reason for this, because one of the things that I'm doing now is instead of telling you what I'm doing, I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and a lot of stuff's going to change dramatically we're going to I just had a, an interview with someone just a minute ago and one of the things with the, the company is it's very different you've heard me talk about BMW they have a plant in night uh, in Greenville and one of the things and if you can do this go to the BMW plant in Greenville South Carolina take the tour which is usually booked up and you will learn a lot about management manufacturing and there's some principles there that I'm pulling from that plant and I'm putting in this company which doesn't really jive with a lot of people because once again getting ready for the next recession so instead of hiring someone to do one thing everyone I interview I just tell them look I do this 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 let's see Melissa V I got my house during the last recession and we only owe 23k now so getting set up <laughs> is important yeah, the, the, the plants in South Carolina, Greenville. So what I'm doing is prepping the people who work for me for the future because when this thing hits, I don't want to say, well, look, all you do is X, so you got to go. Well, I'll be like, okay, well, this product line and what we're doing, this isn't working. But guess what? This product line, this service is working real well, so we're going to move you over here. Now, you would think that people who were faced with retooling or being unemployed let's see boss you actually sculpted me into becoming a better person in the years of watching you no lie part of my success was because of your videos that's very gracious of y'all thank you can you talk about more what's going on with the banks and recession and how we should be moving right now what's up i want to talk about more of that in the details on b school for hustlers that's my other youtube channel be sure to subscribe link probably be below later but here, I'm just kind of giving you some foundational information on some stuff you want to do predicated on what I'm actually doing. I got two offices. This is the second office, and I plan on growing through this recession. Now, for me to grow through this recession, I have to, one, anticipate that it's coming. Two, 
preserve capital. Three, develop several business plans in case this happens. Like, I'll admit when I did this thing on this channel about when Trump became president, what he was going to do to China. I was wrong. It, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Have you heard about Amazon let go, cracking out? Um, no. Hey, with the new economy, a 401k is worth it. I'll talk about that more when we get to the more important part of first making the money. And I'll, I'll jump into that real quick. If you got $100,000 and you're earning 3 to 8%, what does that do? You got a million dollars earning 3 to 8%. You could live not on the 3% side because cap the gains tax. But if you start a business today, and in three years, let's say that business took you $150,000, $300,000 of your own money, reinvesting money, and that business got to the point where it was making, after expenses, bringing home you 80, 80K to 350K. Name one investment that is not super risky that you can do that in one to three years. Uh, I'm going to be really singular on this. I'm going to be about starting businesses, about really stacking your cash, going back to the 50% rule, which is you raise your income to a certain level that you can live on 50% of your income and still live well, plus have another 50% of your income to structure into business, into certain investments, so to preserve your wealth and get wealthier. But what we're going to be doing here is, you know, this is the beginner channel. And I think there's a lot of crazy stuff that's going on with, because this is the thing, recession hits, there's a lot of people who are not going to be able to buy your products. Let's see, <laughs> Madman said, can I Facebook you? Um, yeah, I mean, just go to you know Google Glendon Cameron, you can find my you know, Facebook page is open. I think I only got like 800 friends, so there's plenty of room. Um, what I was saying with just getting prepared to grow because there's a lot of opportunity. Like I said, this channel started in the recession, so I'm not worried about things hitting the fan, but oh, I know where I was going. As a recession hits, discretionary income for many people drops. The Fed's getting ready to raise interest rates, which is very interesting. Should have done it a long time ago, but Every time the interest rate goes up just a hair, X amount of people fall off of the line of being able to afford a home or being able to afford a car, being able to get a credit card. It's just every time it goes up, people are cut off. But what we're going to talk about for beginners is some things you should look at because people are looking for a business to get in to make money, which is understandable, but they don't really give a damn about the business. I mean, they really, really don't care about the business. And I'm going to tell you from experience, if you go out and just get into a business just to make some money, sooner or later you're going to hate it. So what we're going to do is guide you into building businesses and stuff that you appreciate and respect and like because, one, it's hard to start a business. It, it really is. Uh, two, it takes a lot of time. So you're, why create a business that you will hate? Why create a business to work with people you don't like? That makes no sense to me. And you, you have many people, I'm not mentioning names, I'm not throwing shade, who are telling people to go ahead and jump into this business. Don't be who you are. Because I asked someone, I put a lot of political posts on my page, and I will continue. I'm not going to get political on this channel, because like I said, I got a specific channel for that. And I'm really thinking about doing, you know, in the comments, do me this favor. I'm thinking about doing a political blog. And I'm just got all kinds of names. What do you think would be a good name for a political blog? And I'm, I'm going to tell you what this is political blog is going to be about. Because why are so many people who are um, scared? You know, a lot of people voted for Trump because he is a great salesperson. And I know people disagree with me. Uh, he he can, he provides a lesson in persuasion. He convinced, you know, and Trump is not second generation rich, he's third generation rich. His great grandfather was out in California caking it up during the gold rush. Then his father, that's where he got the money to get into the mega real estate game, and then, you know, there comes Donald. He's a great salesperson, like him or not, 
he is. And part of that salesmanship is so many people are scared. They don't know what's going to happen. They're seeing their earning power erode. And anyone that throws them a lifeline or something that's going to change things, like Cole's not coming back. And even though he pulled us out of the Paris Accord, nothing's really going to change anytime soon. So those people are making political decisions based upon their wallet, not really their heart, not their mind, but their wallet and the welfare of their families and kids. So when you're coming from that position, it makes a lot of stuff that happened very understandable. And he's made a promise to people and they really, really believe in him. And they're going to stick with him until it becomes evident that those promises can't be fulfilled. So I was thinking of the fourth right, you know, the fourth right, you know, some name on that because I have a lot of conservative views, <laughs> scared, political scared bitch blog, don't let it hit the fan, that's hilarious. But yeah, put, you know, once the video renders, be sure to come back and put them in those comments. ITG, yes, thank you. That's how Trump won the election. No one understand it or seem to be one more for you. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, we want to put together a political blog that not just talks about what Trump's doing, what the Democrats doing, how this banking bill slid through, but what can you do? Because the thing is, I made some decisions. If I ever take advertisers, they will have to be in line with the views that I have, which will be really, really radical. And they're extremely conservative on some sides, but we're radical. So I'm going to sell products to help people get out the fucking hole, which is what I'm already doing. And that's just how the whole thing's going to work. And then as I get to it, you'll see. But once again, just put that stuff in there. You know, whatever ideal or name you think would be cool. Because if you're informed, like, you know, he got elected, it was more interesting to me because it doesn't, what he does doesn't impact me. Straight up, it doesn't impact me. It's, it's not going to hurt me. I'm not going to lose any money. Um, it's just not. It, but why doesn't it impact me? I have a business. I chart my own course. So I was thinking about that, uh, the hectorics. I really you know, play on words because there's a lot of people who are on that conservative side who they're not racist. They're scared. And kind of pull those folks in there. So that's one thing. And then we're, we're going to talk about a lot more business things because uh, what I'm doing, you know, with all of this is I'm building a traditional business. And you go to B-School for Hustlers or uh, Mac Daddy Media, the other YouTube channels, you'll see me talk about this stuff. And what people don't seem to understand is certain marketing and sales skills are in evergreen, internal. They, they just don't change. They just don't. And we're going to talk about a lot of sales, a lot of marketing. And then, B-School for Hustlers, I first think you need to build your business before you worry about investing. Uh, Jay, the great 85, when's the next recession happening? I think in the next two to three years. And you need to get some wealth because, you know, I put this on quorum and I'll tell you this. Um, I had some really expensive car repairs recently, right? I got an older car. And I had to, I was reading, that's why I paused. I had to put in a lot of money in this car. Now, the car's paid off, but it's an older car. So it's going to need repairs more than a new car, right? And it was a lot. And I was able to pull in money not out of my savings account. I didn't have to do it on the credit card. It came out of cash flow from the business. And the one of the things that we're going to talk about, you know, on B-School for Hustlers, you know, this is going to be your entry level. Um, probably one work on a book for you guys who want to get started. It's going to be called Zero to 100,000 to get from your, that zero spot. And it's going to be some philosophy. It's going to be things I have done, things I am doing. That's going to be in that book. And you're going to get to see me pretty much have 15 different revenue streams. Yes, we're going back to Kindle. I just, uh, the girl I interviewed, she interviewed for an artist position, but she knows how to order stuff from China. And going back to it, and I'll just say it again, I was 100% wrong about Trump messing up China. 
in certain areas, Trump is extremely business as usual. It ain't going to change. China's going to have the largest economy in the world in maybe mere months, and they'll call it in a few years. And it's not going to regress. Uh, on my Facebook page, there is this, you know, just go ahead and, you know, it's open. I, I friend everybody. That, you got to have a picture. If you got, like, no picture and you only got one or two friends, I'm not friending them. But it talks about why China is working the way that it does. It's very deep stuff. And I'm going to be ordering some stuff from China. I'm probably, I'm not going to be doing Amazon, but I'm going to be doing my own thing. Because you'll see me, because let's see, uh, YouTube, well, YouTube's kind of going away. Because I don't really get AdSense anymore. So I don't really count that as a business model. I mean, it's a little income. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't marginalize that. It's like, it went from 500 to 1,000 a month. At one point, it was 1,500, 2,000. Uh, I may get a hundred to two fifty a month now, so it really went down. But over a year, that's two to three thousand dollars passive income for some of them already doing. So you know, it, it is an income stream. It's just not. It's never really been a big income stream. But you're going to see me do the media company, and you're going to see me do Kindle. You're going to see me do an e-commerce site um, with Mac Daddy Media. It is an agency. But what I'm going to have to, is these other streams of income and these other businesses so I don't have to take client work I don't want to do. And this kind of goes back into the philosophy of creating a business to work with people you don't like. I think in the beginning you may have, it just really depends because, you know, this is my 12th, 13th business, 14th business, something like that. So I'm at a point where I'm not going to build a business to do something I don't want to do. I'm not going to build a business to work with people I want to work with. And when I made that decision, Things got very clear. And I'm also building a business not to sell. How you build a business to get an early exit is totally different than the business that you built for legacy, hence the publishing. Agreed, studied. I, I missed that comment, cocoa colored muscles. And we're going to talk about those principles uh, with uh, Glenn and Cameron. That's another YouTube channel. You may want to check it out. I'm going to talk about personal development for hustlers. My personal development is very different from other people's personal development. It's not that theirs is wrong or mine is right. Mine's very different. It's very effective. So that'll be on that channel, Mac Daddy Media, Be School for Hustlers. I am Cameron. That's currently my political channel, but I'm probably going to do a dedicated political channel and a blog. And then I am Cameron will probably go to stories and vlogs. But you will see me, you know, like I said, I'm not going to just tell you. You're just going to see me do this, and then you're going to see this. Push, where the channels, the blogs, the YouTube, the Facebook, all that stuff explodes with content. You, you will be choking on content. And the thing is, if you're not putting it out there like that, and once again, this is a company. It's not me. I'm not going to even mislead people and go like, it's just me. There's currently seven people on the team. Uh, hopefully this month get another two or three. And then it's just going to be bananas. But that's what you got to do if you want to be heard in this noisy world. And once again, it's all going to be, you, you can see it and something else. Some of it you would be the reverse hack. And there's some of it you want because currently working on an e-commerce site, I am looking at so many people who with these e-commerce site courses and stuff, side-eyed. Because it is not as easy as people would have you believe. I didn't think it was going to be easy. Never entered my mind that it was going to be easy. But let's see. That was looking crazy. But the, the challenges and the things that happened are just been mind-boggling. But that's good because uh, the, stuff, the site was set up. Is email marketing still important? I'm going to answer that. Email marketing, if you're selling a physical product, if you're selling a digital product, is a hell of important. It is extremely important. Don't let people fool you. Yeah, I'm going to, tomorrow, today is the 12th, the 15th, we get crunk on B-School for Hustlers, the course. I'm not selling anything right now. If you're on the email list, I'll put it out or I'll probably do a video later. But yeah, email marketing is still extremely effective. Do not let people mislead you talking about uh, email. Email marketing is not dead. 
I made money from YouTube. Here were my channels that made the most money. At one point, YouTube was number one. Then the email list became number one. And they kind of switched. But YouTube, email list, then a Facebook group. Never made much money on Twitter. And I haven't really tried to make money on Instagram. But for me, it's always been YouTube and my email list. Or my email list and YouTube and everything else has been a distant third or fourth. Um, Tim buying precious. No. No, 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 no. Okay. I want you to understand some stuff. That might be, let's, let's just say shit hits the fan, right? What's going to be the most important thing if shit truly hit the fan? Water, food, guns, and ammo. People who have that stuff going to be all right. Let's say you got 10 million in gold, but you have no guns to protect that. Oh, or where you got it, you have no water and food. You would be overrun like that. There's books on Argentina and Bosnia when they went through the shit hit the fan. And just read the books and you, you'll see. So if the shit hit the fan, you would want to have a good skill set like be a nurse, uh, a baker, a farmer, you know, somebody that gives people stuff they need. So, yeah, you know, forget all about that gold stuff. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just... I'm telling you, Amazon bullets. Amazon's taking over. You know, let's talk about Amazon. I don't think Amazon is going to be hurt or going anywhere anytime soon, but as a customer, their service has fallen off. And this is something I've noted over the last year. It has really fallen off, and I'm not the only one experiencing this. So typically, that's usually a sign of what's to come 10, 15. Like I said, nothing's going to happen to them anytime soon. But they've got problems and it's just they may solve them they may solve them but i look at my behavior as a consumer and there's times amazon doesn't have what i want and i go to another website you want to know why all websites have two-day shipping a lot of them have free shipping they have to to compete that's just like the price of entry so but you know back to what you got to do and we're going to talk about for the beginners because you know sometimes some of you don't know what you want you don't know what kind of business to start. You just like trying to get money. I've talked about being a get money hustler. is good to get some stuff started, but it's not the way to build a long-term business. It's just not. It's just not going to do it. But part of that is, you know, going back to videos from 2009, 10, 11, you're going to have to get out of debt, and you're going to get your credit straight, and you're going to have to start stacking cash. And you're, you're really going to have to accelerate a lot of stuff because if you take this time to build up and get your business rocking and rolling before this recession hits, when the recession hits, your dollar that used to get you three things is going to get you 10. Your, your $10 that used to get you 30 things is going to get you 100. And your $1,000 bill is going to get you, okay, crazy stuff. Uh, Extreme X, what's your main source of income? Right now, consulting. Because I really haven't been pushing products. I got four consulting clients, and they're all pretty major. When I say major, I can live off any one of them, but I would be foolish to just stick with that when I have an opportunity to do so much more. But yeah, that's the main... And this is a funny thing. Um, I got all of them from YouTube. And I've only met two, physically. Like one, I can't even tell you the stories this dude has been into. Gregory, what do you sell? I <laughs> Go to hustlerskungfu.com. That will just solve that question really quickly. But getting ready you know, for the recession. You know, like I said, I feel I could be wrong. You have two to three years, maybe four. So if you go ahead and bust right now and get your money right, get your credit right, you could literally be develop generational wealth in this next recession. What is your specific proof of this upcoming recession? Okay, uh, I will give you some of the signals. Good question. Number one, 30 to 40% of all millennials are living with their parents. Number two, interest rates are going up. Number three, We've had a bull market for nine fucking years. 
Number four, housing outpaced income. At some point, the market's going to correct. You can't keep building all these houses people can't afford without something happening. There's cause and, and you know, there's, there's, there's cause and effect. And things have been going really good for a while. Uh, a bull market is a market that's running wild and free and just growing. A bear market is hibernating. It's not doing much. You know, bears hibernate. So, no, no, I'm just saying, no, because I look at social signals. I mean, you got people who graduated college with 4.0s who are living with their parents. They have a job, but their student loan payments are 500 to 1200 bucks a month. You, this thing, you've got several metropolitan areas where people can't afford housing. You have so many signals that certain things can only exist for so long before they correct. That's why these things are called corrections. And it's coming. It, it's coming because, and with this new deregulation bill that they passed through, that may speed it up. Like, boom. I mean, it, it, I mean, bottom could fall out. So go ahead and get yourself prepared because there's a lot of people who are not going to prepare. Let's see, Lo, you're correct. I'm in real estate, so on point. I've been looking at this for the last year. It's like certain parts of Atlanta are unaffordable. In my neighborhood, anything that's like $400,000 and below flies. $500,000, it sits for a while or above. And part of it is um, people don't have the income for those kind of mortgages. You have people in San Francisco who are literally priced out of the housing market in San Francisco. You got people, the folks who do the fast food jobs, are driving 30 miles to get to their job because they can't afford to live close to where they work. And this is happening um, some parts of Atlanta. There's certain parts of South Atlanta that have not recovered. You've got issues. You've got things going on in Dallas, Houston, Austin. And it's only so long. And I'll tell you, these interest rates go up. Then we have inflation, which we have not had in a long time, which is not normal. So, and once again, I could be 100% wrong, but if I'm wrong, I'm going to have money in the bank and assets. So, hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But part of that is, with that happening, I have to be really judicious on how I hire people, and I have to, Brooklyn, I, New York's pretty much, uh, what was it, Jimmy MacMillan rents too damn high. Uh, Dallas is going crazy. Yes, Airbnb is the biggest hotel chain. <laughs> and we'll talk about that. But I just, in my heart, feel that's where we're heading, and I'm preparing, and I'll just share the journey of what I'm doing. Um, this office space, let's see. As a matter of fact, I think I can do it. I don't know if the sun's going to block it out. I'm going to show you. Let's see. Hold on. There we go. And boom, there it is. Okay. I'm near what's called the King and Queen building, right? The rent in the building is six times high, higher than where I'm at now. Six times. Now, I looked over there. You know, it's real snazzy. It's very snazzy. But I um, feel <laughs> we're going to have a recession and I'm getting more space for less. So that was one of the decisions. Um, t Sinister Angel, that's true and not true. Recession happens and banks tighten up credit and you go to get a loan, that ain't in your mind, that's a physical reality. What are your thoughts that a bail-in might happen? Dude, anyone can buy, that's not true. Anyone can buy a home right now? That's not true. I don't think we're in a recession now. I think things are really good right now. I think uh, part of the problem is the jobs that are out there do not pay enough for people to um, service student loan debt, buy a car and buy a house. So that's that's the crazy thing. But, you know, sinister, anyone can buy a house right now? That ain't true. There's a lot of people who get turned down. Uh, I don't know about natural disasters. 
Uh, CJ, wonder if my competition could be bought for pennies on the dollar during that time. That would be nice. Um, could be, because one of the things we're going to talk about is getting your income up and self-financing your ventures. Because let's say, because I, I believe in using credit. I really do. I have a client that their plan is to get to the point to be able to do a million dollar loan in the year. But if you're small and you're doing these smaller businesses, you need to be nimble. And, you know, that's why I talk about service business. But get your cash up and get your credit up because let's say your business is peaking when this thing is coming down. Your money's just going to go further. It's just going to be, it's like, it's going to be crazy. And part of the reason that I'm doing the media company and I'm getting really, really heavy into publishing is during the Great Depression, pulp novel writers became millionaires. Look it up. So, you, yeah, credit will contract. We get in the recession, interest rates go up. Yeah, credit's going to lie. <laughs> Damn. So that's just some stuff. And I'll, I'll be having more conversations like this. Uh, I'll be talking about both stuff. But, you know, the streams are going to start coming back. The videos are going to come back. We're, we're going to do a lot of stuff. Political dojo. Uh, on the political blog, I am not going to affiliate it with the Hustlers Kung Fu brand. So that's going to be something totally different. No, Benjamin Program. I am completely 100% out of the market. I've been out of the market a good 10 years now. Now I know many people are like, that's crazy, right? But I'm going to tell you one investment that I made, 2009, I spent $289, created this channel, I wrote a book, created additional products, and from, you know, not in one year, be clear, but from 2009 up to now, this channel has earned $6 million. Now, please tell me someone who did not get into one of these juicy, super big companies, Airbnb, Facebook, who's made that kind of money in 10 years from a $289 investment. Please put it in the comments. So that's one of the reasons that none, Benjamin the program, not, because I am betting on me. I know how to make money in a recession. That's what I'm doing. And once again, I'm showing you what I'm doing. Because a lot of people think not to have any money in market is absolutely crazy. I have friends. Well, I can't say they're friends. I know people. We're acquaintances. They know me on a first name basis. And I know one that's worth 50 million. He has no money in the stock market. He's got 70 buildings he owns, 70 pieces of real estate. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, if you can get into um, a startup really early and hold your positions, and then when it sells or goes to public, yeah, you can make a lot of money. But Let's, let's really look at that. You know, there's it's called the Fortune 500 for a reason. There's maybe 10,000 companies who are flowing real heavy in the world. And we got almost 8 billion people. So, you know. <laughs> um, actually, that's funny. I need to change my quorum thing. I actually study medicine at the University of Charminade. Oh, you know, well, I'm not really worried about that because if you notice that once the live stream's over, then the chat here disappears. And they may start adding that into the regular comments because, you know, there's been so many comments that's been rolling pretty fast. But, we're, you know, we'll, we'll talk about a lot of stuff. No, I've never heard of proximity marketing. And one of the things I do here on this channel, if I've never heard of it, I will tell you that, and I'm not even going to say if it's good or bad. I have no clue. But we'll, we'll talk about a lot of stuff because some for, for certain things, like I'll give you this example, and this is something I told a few friends years ago. Married couple, and I said, look, you know, guys live on one income and don't get a new car every time you get a fancy. You have so much money. You know how many people in this country have 100 Gs in the bank, cash money? Not in the 401k, not in the start market, not in equity at home, but 100. It's not that many. They got that. 
in spades. And then they go out and buy property and pay cash for it. Because one of the things is about getting your cash up. Let's see. What's up, Ray? Uh, the stream's moving so fast. And this is really different. Uh, some people will never come back from the next recession. They will die blaming the Great Recession. Uh, that's a good point, CJ. There's a lot of people who did not come back from the last recession. If you're in Atlanta, on the south side of Atlanta, a lot of those homes did not come back. Um, I, bonuses, I mean, some of those MOSs can get serious with bonuses, but proportionally, there's just not a lot of people with that kind of cash. And many people will tell you not to, like um, the banker, when I was putting the money out to go get the car, she was looking at me like I was crazy. That's so dangerous. And I didn't tell her how much money I used to carry every day when I was in the storage auction business. Uh, Ray, I need to know where I should start. We'll, we'll talk about that because I'm going to change some of the content on here. Uh, first thing you need to do is sit down and ask yourself, what do you want to do for the next 10 years? And a lot of people are like, oh, no, I want to do anything. I want to be committed. Well, be uncommitted and watch the committed people employ you and watch the committed people own your own you and eat your lunch and date your woman and marry your woman and stuff. Watch the committed people do that. I hate the fact that in Texas we hardly had any equity to cash in on the housing market. Um, Texas is a very different market because the energy, the energy uh, sector, I mean, they didn't have a recession in Texas. So, like you said, it's very, very different there. I mean, if you're in Texas and you don't want to work, it's because you don't want to work. Because there's plenty of jobs there in the energy sector. So, it's, it's a very interesting thing. But, you know, just we'll be having more little chats like this and other stuff. Because I think if you position yourself correctly, you will be able to do so much. Uh, I'm not going to do political stuff here, but if you go to my channel, I am Cameron. I got a video up there that is pissing people off left and right where I actually talk about that. Uh, I'm going to keep the, the topics singular on each channel. Hustlers Kung Fu is for beginning hustlers. B-School for Hustlers is for business owners or whatever business who want to go from six figures to seven, from seven figures to eight. So that's what we'll do. Uh, do this, Ray. Go to hustlerskungfu.com and look for the Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. It's like a $9 audio book. It's four hours. Go ahead and grab that and start listening to it. It's going to help you a lot. <laughs> Rockstone. That's really cool. Just don't get caught by code enforcement because that's an illegal business. Ask me how I know. Okay, yeah, they're, they're going to come. Uh, rich, self-published author. Because, you know, one of the things, like I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you. Because, you know, when, when, when you say that, hey, I've just painted my office, it works a little bit better when you can say, I just painted my office and show it. And like I said, there, there's probably not going to be anybody here other than me and Valencia until July. But um, you'll see, because this is, that's a whiteboard. I don't know. Do I have the? No. That's a whiteboard. So I'm going to be doing whiteboard videos and other things. And I'll be breaking down some concepts because uh, I'll be using it for all the channels. I mean, if you ever go to a co-working space and you use those whiteboard walls, once you get addicted to that stuff, you got to have it. Because, I mean, it wasn't cheap. The stuff to do that section was like 300 bucks. But I can express myself, do videos, point out concepts and stuff. Henry Lewis, you're 100% you're hundred, you're hundred correct. That's why I'm doing this video. See, you're right. But if you're not prepared, you can't make that money. That's the whole thing. Because uh, I'm getting ready to stack. I'm going back to probably not the 50% solution, and I'll break that down later. Just you know, be sure to subscribe, and you, you'll catch that. But I'm trying to get to the 10% solution. Yeah, she launched her channel. Um, 
you'll see her because like i said we're, we're i gotta get some furniture in here and one of the things i'm gonna do because i was getting in that mindset where i wanted it all be set up and sexy and i was like nope 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 just start just start rolling just start putting stuff out and you'll see the whole process because i still don't know what furniture i want in here i really don't and instead of just going to get something to get some i'll just take my time build it out and one of the reasons I like this space is one two three four five there's six windows so when I let them up there's a lot of natural light it'll be real cool for videos and training so it is it is just so much opportunity but like someone just said Wells Fargo became one of the largest banks in the country during the Great Depression so you're right but Wells Fargo was positioned to make that money just because there's money out on the streets, if you if you're not you don't have a uh, a uh, street sweeper, then uh, you're <laughs> you're not going to be able to get suck it up. Yeah, stud seventy eight. Um, we will be doing a lot of marketing stuff at B School for Hustlers. The next course, which starts. You know, and I'm not gonna get too deep into it because, like I said, I'm not selling anything in this video. I'll be I may do another stream tonight. And I'll get into all that because I need, because I'm in the office. I had interviews today, so I don't have all the notes and I don't want to talk about it. I think Golden State's going to do it. So we'll get into that. Yeah, um, one thing I learned when I, you know, and thanks for that, Rona. One thing I learned at the co-working space is every day you need to clean your whiteboard wall. Because I noticed that they didn't have that problem. Seven games, more money. That's true. We'll see what Draymond Green does tonight. Because um, I actually thought, I, I got so confused, I thought the game was yesterday. But it's really tonight. But we'll see. You know, we'll see how that energy is looking when they come out. But we'll have more little chats like this. Be sure to subscribe. And after this live stream renders, be sure to go down there and put down, what do you think should be the name of the political blog and channel? And it's going to be very different. It's because, you know, I have a lot to say on that. And I'm not going to get into it here. And for those of you who are starting YouTube channels, singular is better than multi. And when I say that is, if you got nine topics, you need nine channels. Definitely. All right. Thanks for coming out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Later on, I have a link where you can get on my email list so you can get all the good juicy stuff that's coming. And I will talk to you guys later.